international guests here and also because we are uh, webcasted live so we will hopefully have people also joining us from other places there so if you in the, in the discussions and so on we need to use the microphone we have to remember that uh, so you can also be heard so welcome uh, my name is Johan Shilan Shana I'm the executive director of the Stockholm Environment Institute it's very nice to see quite a lot of new faces quite a lot of young faces being here today which is great actually because today we are setting the agenda which actually affects you much more than me to be honest um, if I manage to stay along, I actually will retire the same year as the SDGs should be fulfilled. <laughs> I've been 65 then, but for you, this is a startup. Uh, and it's interesting, even from a personal perspective, because when I started my career, that was basically when we had the Rio conference in 1992. So the sustainability agenda was high then as well, and uh, I was very excited by the Rio agenda and the Agenda 21 and everything that was linked to that. And I hope that you will be equally excited what the world leaders in New York, in their wisdom, will decide, hopefully today, about the new development agenda. And finally, again, getting environment and development issues back together in a comprehensive way. So today we will have uh, the agenda being agreed upon, hopefully. You have seen a lot being written about this. Um, some are very much in favor of the SDGs, organizations like ourselves. This is sort of the core of what we are doing. Some are quite critical about the SDGs. They are saying they are too broad, they are too wide, they don't really focus and so on. Um, and of course, it's going to be interesting to continue that discussion. But from our perspective, from SCI's perspective, this is exactly the case. Sustainability is not a very simple, straight way forward. It is a complex world if we want to address poverty, development, climate, natural resources, equity. This is a complex agenda. Everything is connected. But nothing will really happen if we just stay at that global level. Uh, the world leaders have taken the first step. Everybody knows that these agendas, these goals, these targets have to really be brought down, not just to the regional EU, national level, but even to the local level. That was, the, that was really the, the strength of Agenda 21 once, that it was brought down to the local level and, and really engaged people. The SDGs are still far up here. So countries need to start working on this, and this is what we are going to talk about today, which is actually great, because Sweden can play a leading role in this, clearly, together with a number of other like-minded people or, or countries. Um, every country has a responsibility. It doesn't mean that the goals or the responsibilities look the same for each country. Uh, what we need to focus on, what we should do, and what we need to... Uh, how we need to support other parts of the world. We, we all have our uh, priorities, we all are, have our challenges. But the agenda is global. Uh, the implementation becomes national and local, and we have to interpret that. And fortunately, I have 200 colleagues who are much more knowledgeable than I am about almost everything we do. Uh, so I will hand over now. I will hand over uh, to Nina Weitz. I'm happy that you're here, Nina, because you have been common media star today, already been in radio twice, because of the SDGs. And this is actually quite good, because I think the SDGs have been too far off the agenda for too long. It's been a lot of focus on climate, it's great, but now we need to get this broader agenda up. So Nina, it's great that you will take us through a little bit uh, the report that we launched not so long ago. Uh, about Sweden um, and we will also then have inputs from uh, our man in this case in New York who is there right now, Mons Nilsson and then later on we will also come back and have an open discussion where not just you know Q&A, you asking questions and we trying to respond but also your perspectives, I mean provide comments, feel open to also uh, you know state what you think is important as we move forward and then my colleagues will ask all uh, or answer all the tricky questions and I can take the simple ones but still Nina if you can join me up here um, and I will hand over the microphone to you so let's get started there you go thank you Um, okay, uh, I wanted to just first quickly introduce what, what SEI has been doing in relation to the SDGs over the, the past uh, three years. 
Uh, we've been involved in the development of the new global goals for sustainable development and that's what's previously been called the post-2015 agenda and the sustainable development goals. Um, since a few days back it's uh, agenda 2030 uh, and the global goals uh, for sustainable development. Uh, so SEI has engaged as part of a group of other international research uh, institutes and provided independent analytical support to uh, members of the open working group who was tasked to draft the goals. Um, and also we've been uh, supporting individual member states. We've also done research on certain aspects of the agenda, particularly on uh, integration and policy coherence. Uh, and clear, clearly, as Yuan mentioned, most of SEI's research agenda sort of informs these goals in one way or the other. Um, the UN process then has uh, quite naturally focused on the, primarily on the global level. It's focused on setting the global goals and the global targets and on facilitating a dialogue on the means uh, of implementation and then also on formulating an indicator uh, framework for global follow-up and review. Uh, but guidance on how this global framework will be translated to the national level uh, and how countries will act on it uh, has been quite limited. And an important principle then of the SDGs uh, or global goals, as I should now uh, sort of re-learn uh, to say again uh, instead of the SDGs, um, they apply to all countries, so it's not uh, an aid agenda uh, in the same way as the Millennium Development Goals were. Uh, they will also be implemented according to, uh, to national circumstances. Um, and the agenda uh, states, in fact, that each government will set its own national targets guided by the global level of ambition but taking into account national circumstances and that each government will decide how the global targets should be incorporated in national planning processes, policies and strategies. So the question then is how countries can approach this task uh, and if they have yet realized the scope of this exercise. Yeah, just yes. one thing. Mons mm -hmm. will connect with us. He will leave his hotel in about eight, ten minutes. Okay. He, just for your plans. We have to get him in yeah. for a quick dip and then you continue. Excellent. So, yep. In the middle of the Perfect. Um, <coughs> so this is also then the focus of, of this report that we've launched uh, last week, where we present an initial analysis of which goals are relevant for Sweden what these targets can mean in a Swedish context uh, and discuss some key opportunities and challenges for target setting uh, and implementation at the national level. So we've put this forward as sort of an inspiration uh, to government representatives and other stakeholders that are the ones who will in fact need to lead and take ownership uh, of this uh, process of interpreting the global framework um, and set national targets. Um, and I will come back to later that technical assessment can only get us some distance uh, in this task. So I think we should leave. Uh, Let's do that. Let's shift see. over to Mons. So how do we connect? Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Here he is. Okay. Technology.
And Mons, can you hear us? Okay, we'll see if we get a chance to, that would be like a live update from the actual summit where he is in New York. So we'll see if he can come back with some, some news for us. Uh, so uh, more on the report then. Uh, first of all, I'd like to mention that as countries face um, implementation and considering what, what actions they will take, they will need to consider three different uh, levels of, of implementation. One is the domestic agenda. Uh, which are issues on the domestic policy agenda uh, in Sweden, for example, uh, equality, social inclusion, education, sustainable management, and marine environments, to mention a few. Um, we'll also need to consider what Sweden can do within the scope of its development cooperation agenda. This is likely to be more uh, the targets similar to those that were in the MDGs, uh, for example, on sanitation, on access to energy, water and food, uh, or reduced maternal mortality, for example. Uh, within the international agenda, um, Sweden will need to consider its contribution and how it impacts on international sustainable development and global public goods uh, and resources sustainability. Uh, and our report here has focused on the domestic agenda. Uh, as we saw, I need to test a framework on on a high-income country uh, and also in shifting the focus away from from just uh, a perception of the agenda as one for for the de for development cooperation um, so as the first step of our analysis we reviewed which targets were relevant to sweden's domestic agenda for this screening we excluded 52 targets uh, that are on the means of implementation and they appear both under each goal and as a separate goal in, uh, in goal 17. And we first looked for which of those uh, remaining 117, uh, 107 sorry, uh, targets that are applicable in Sweden. So that is if, if those targets actually address phenomena that can exist in Sweden. And uh, our screening found that they are all applicable. And this has been one of the UN's uh, ambitions as well, that the framework should be universally applicable. Um, secondly, we'll look at which of them uh, we could confidently say were achieved in Sweden and would probably remain so until 2030. And on uh, this basis, we could exclude 26 targets, primarily those MDG type of, of targets, extreme poverty, hunger, access to drinking water, energy and basic education, for example. So that means that uh, 81 targets or 76% of those that we reviewed would require some action in Sweden. So clearly the agenda 2030 that is now being agreed upon is not just an aid agenda, but very much relevant to Sweden. Uh, our screening also flagged up six goal areas as potentially more challenging than others for Sweden. This included the goal on education, on sustainable economic growth, on reducing inequalities, uh, climate change, sustainable consumption and production, uh, and marine resources. It is of course problematic to point out and prioritize certain uh, areas and targets as more important than others. In particular, as many of those targets uh, interlink, and they're also highly political. So this should be taken with um, some more as flagging up goals that appeared in.
example is a few examples from goals on economic inequality, gender equality and sustainable economic growth. Uh, target 10.1 uh, is on reducing income inequality at the national level. Uh, and speaking of relative poverty then, this is one of the poverty targets that is uh, perhaps most relevant to high income countries. And for Sweden, which is one of the most equal countries um, and consequently close to achieving the target, uh, income gaps are widening. So trends are looking negative uh, and despite being close to achievement, this merits attention by, by the government. Uh, in uh, recent uh, suggestions, more redistributive reforms have been proposed uh, and are then specifically targeted to benefit those with the lowest income and to strengthen equality, income equality between men and women. So this is an example of a target that was actually one of the most straightforward ones. It's quite clear. Um, but under the same goal, um, we struggled with uh, the target 10.2, for example, which states that by 2030, empower and promote the social, economic and political inclusion of all, irrespective of age, sex, disability, race, ethnicity, origin, religion or economic or other status. This is clearly very multidimensional and includes ambiguous wording and does not clearly express an end state of what is uh, to be delivered. Uh, our second example here is target 5.2 which addresses violence against women and also includes trafficking. Uh, this is an example of a target that in part addresses issues that cannot be handled only within the domestic uh, agenda. As a cross-border phenomena, trafficking require international uh, cooperation. And secondly, it's a target where uh, data is difficult, as violence against women is known to be heavily underreported. Although this is improving in Sweden, it makes comparison over time very difficult. But despite these challenges, then, the target brings up important issues for Sweden. Uh, statistics show that sexual violence against women and trafficking is increasing. Although this can in part be explained then by, by the improved reporting rather than an actual increase. Um, it's, reported, it's been reported more than 27,000 cases of assault in 2014 and almost 3,000 cases of rape in 2013. Um, so eliminating gender-based violence is a priority of the Swedish government as part of its gender equality agenda. Uh, and a new national strategy was presented in June this year. My last example of the targets then is target 8.4, uh, which addresses resource efficiency in consumption and production and decoupling of economic growth from environmental degradation. And this is a target that is tricky from a domestic perspective as it addresses global resource efficiency and the scale for decoupling is not clearly stated in the target. Sweden has decoupled environmental degradation within Sweden from economic growth and emissions have decreased by 22% since 1990. But for more high income countries, the total emissions from domestic consumption is more relevant, especially if we're talking about global resource efficiency. And emissions from Swedish consumption have increased since the early 90s uh, and an increasing proportion is taking place abroad. So assessing this target is tricky but it's clearly raising relevant issues, uh, especially since there's been limited practical and policy efforts uh, to date towards achieving Sweden's own national objectives of solving its own environmental problems without increasing pressures elsewhere. So in addition to the scale issues of this target, which makes uh, expectation at the national level uh, unclear, it also includes ambiguous wording such as promote, uh, which gives no clear end state. Uh, and also statistics that link Swedish consumption with impacts along supply chains uh, is lacking. Um, so what then are the implications uh, of this for Sweden in terms of setting up implementation of the SDGs? Uh, we found, uh, as I've stated, that all the global goals that are being agreed upon this weekend raise uh, issues of relevance to Sweden. Um, a majority of the targets um, 
are not yet uh, achieved. Uh, few of the targets, however, address completely new policy areas to Sweden, and they therefore need to be integrated in existing politics uh, and policy. This is a great opportunity to integrate uh, sustainability in existing policy processes and politics, align sector objectives, and align domestic and foreign agendas. But in order to know exactly what to integrate uh, and what to act on, there is need to explore in more depth uh, what those globally proposed agenda will mean, define what the Swedish priorities are, and identify possible entry points for implementation. And this cannot be made by an independent research institute like SEI, uh, although we would be very happy to support the work. Um, but technical assessment has shown very clearly that it only takes us uh, halfway. The nature of the agenda is political and it requires both political decisions uh, and priorities. Um, Target setting and a meaningful national implementation plan requires, therefore, a government-led process for interpreting the agenda for the Swedish context. This process is critical for capturing the opportunity to make the SDGs more than a reporting framework to the UN, making it one that actually drives relevant uh, action. In order to get the priorities right and build ownership, this process would also benefit from being inclusive, including various ministries, local government and agencies, as well as civil society and uh, business. In terms of leadership, then, Parliament will uh, have to play an important role to keeping the SDGs high on the agenda and ensuring also ultimate accountability. And the of Office of the Prime Minister, Ministry of Finance and Ministry of Foreign Affairs will have an important and coordinating role in this, and we think that Sweden is well prepared having a Minister for Future and Strategic Development Issues uh, and also its uh, Secretariat within the Prime Minister's office. Uh, the comprehensiveness of the agenda and the many interlinkages between targets does also put higher demand for integrated planning and action across policy areas, and this may require new or adapted organizational structures. How responsibilities for the agenda is to be assigned is a very tricky question uh, and is being worked on. Uh, but it may not be to split up responsibility based on how the SDGs are, are organized at the global level, but rather by identifying cross-cutting themes that contribute to goals achievement and identify how various ministries can work towards these within their current mandate. In any case, coordination, knowledge sharing and learning between ministries will be important for successful implementation. So in approaching this task, governments uh, can be supported by analytical frameworks uh, that ensure proper review of coherence and cooperation between different policy areas and also between national, bilateral and international policy levels. And the Swedish government has begun to explore its policy for global development as one entry point and policy coherence for sustainable development as a supporting framework. Uh, and we think that continuing this work uh, was, will be very useful in moving forward. Uh, finally, accountability will be key to progress. Uh, and our analysis has questioned how effective the global indicators are as drivers of change. Successful implementation will depend on getting the actions right and there is risk uh, that global indicators divert uh, attention to other, for Sweden, less relevant areas. So instead our findings suggest that greater emphasis uh, should be put on national indicators uh, and monitoring frameworks which can ensure accountability towards citizens uh, on those relevant actions. And such indicators will need to be developed in conjunction with the national target setting and can be complementary uh, to the framework that the UN is now uh, establishing for tracking the global progress. Uh, I'll stop there. I don't know if we have months. No, it no. seems to be a delay of 30 seconds. Uh, so uh -huh. it's, That's tricky. Yeah. Okay. That's the way. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, Osa, maybe can you join us as well? Because I think for the Q&A you've been part of, of this uh, 
as well. So maybe you can also even use yourself a little bit and, and use this mic. You have to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll share it. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm uh, Osa Passion. I'm a researcher here at SCI who I had the privilege to work with Nina on this uh, report. It was very um, interesting, but also very. Um, demanding in terms of effort. So Nina did all the hard work screening all these targets, but uh, it was very informative actually to read through them, uh, all of them. It's, it's a very comprehensive and sort of uh, super inclusive framework. Yep. Great, so join us here. Um, and just the only thing I would like to say is that while well, the report you have available, you, you can have additional copies if you want to bring back to other colleagues. Um, we have also put in the back there a lot of other material which is linked to, for instance, this what Nina mentioned, Independent Research Forum, uh, which has been an international collaborative uh, network of organizations supporting countries in the process leading up to uh, New York now. Um, and also some other things that we, we've been writing, blogs and, and so on. Um, and one of the few times I've also been involved is actually trying to convince a couple of people who are critical to towards the whole SDGs that I, th I thought they were wrong, but I realized very quickly that that was a hopeless battle. Uh, Lomborg was one of them, by the way. I don't know if you saw his uh, uh, article in, in Svenska Dablarat a few days ago, uh, but read that one otherwise. I think it's an interesting way of how people really still misunderstand what the SDGs are all about. So we have a huge task, really, to explain um, what they actually mean and what they are for, because I think people have misunderstood that. Anyway, uh, let's have comments and questions and uh, discussions or debate or critical points or whatever you want. This is an open agenda here now. So uh, anyone, come on, you are the next generation, so I'm expecting you to really have some. Yes, good. It doesn't work like this, but it's for the web. Okay, I understand. Um, I was thinking, it was really interesting to hear about uh, the sustainable development goals from a, a Swedish context. And I was thinking about the Millennium Development Goals that has a, just focusing on the, the developing countries. Um, and when um, the Sustainable Development Goals had this massive uh, participatory process consulting a lot of actors, and I was thinking, how did it take into account, if you know anything about how it took into account the Swedish actors? In other words, how is the, the sustainable development goes tailored for a Swedish context? Basically, yeah. Okay, can you we take a few comments and maybe then we can come back to some uh, responses from your side. Any, anyone else uh, who likes to comment? Yes? Maybe say who you are also. I should have oh, said that. Okay. I'm uh, Richard Stenberg, Richard Stone from uh, Stockholm University. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm studying the, the effects of agriculture on the Swedish uh, environmental goals right now. Uh, and also, I wonder how do these goals correlate with uh, with the Swedish environmental goals? Mm. Uh, yeah. That's an interesting point. Uh, anyone else who wants to add something now, or we can take up more later? So, so I mean, the first question is interesting about the involvement. The UN is uh, clearly stating that you know millions of people have been involved over the world. Uh, we have been working a lot with this mainly on the international arena. So what about the national level? But what about Sweden? Um, my perception is that it's been quite um, uh, limited, the discussion in, uh, in, in Sweden. But the Swedish delegation was one of uh, fewer that actually included uh, civil society organizations uh, as part of their delegation. And there's been uh, continuous consultations as well. Um, throughout the process of, of setting the global goals, uh, where the foreign ministry, for example, who's been leading the, the negotiations from Sweden, uh, has involved uh, consultations with those organizations as well. Um, yeah, just to uh, add a brief comment on that, I, I agree with uh, you, uh, Nina, that there has been consultation, but I would say, main, reflecting back on what you said, Johan, that it's been um, to some extent perceived as this development uh, assistant ad agenda. So the Ministry for Foreign Affairs have been um, consulting with stakeholders, but there hasn't really been that sort of uh, systematic consultation on the domestic agenda, sort of. 
for example, how do they match with the environmental quality objectives? And I think this is not absolutely not unique to Sweden. Um, I went to one of these meetings in New York with the negotiators and from one other European high-income country when they said what they were sort of doing on the SDG, it was completely sort of within the development assistance sector. So I think, and we ha had a report actually from Mons this morning, he'd seen some new material that it is very much still framed as a mm. developing country agenda. So yeah, that's what we're trying to sort of question and start a broader discussion about. I think, I mean, this, what is important at this point is also what will actually happen in terms of where the responsibility of the implementation in Sweden will yeah. land. It's a, it's a bit of a discussion within the government right now that some of us are well aware of. And we should hope that it doesn't land on uh, actually the Ministry for Environment, I would say, because then it becomes like Agenda 21, uh, an environment issue, or at the Ministry for, at least not at part of the Ministry for Foreign Affairs dealing with ODA. I mean, it's more interesting if it ends, ends up in the Ministry for Finance or, or something, I mean, somewhere else where you have a more overarching responsibility for me. Be. Yeah. <laughs> So, but I, I still want the Ministry for Environment to be involved, so don't, you know, don't worry. Absolutely. But I can say, I, I, I was uh, talking about, you know, also your question, has this been a negotiation or discussion in Sweden? I think in general, not just have we not been so much involved, even though you have a good example where this has worked in part of the formal involvement through civil society, but I, I, I was speaking in, in Södertälje municipality some weeks ago, for instance, and I asked them, I mean, th these were, were people really working on environmental issues primarily, and I asked them, so what do you know about the SDGs? How many know any of the SDGs in here? One, two people out of 40. And that's still, you know, so we have some uphill I think, to work. And, and okay, they haven't been involved in the development, now the implementation is another thing. So any other comments or questions? Come on, come on, come on, come on. I, I <laughs> okay, <can't>. good. <laughs> yeah, if no one has got a question or anything, I would like to question uh, the, the goal number eight uh, from, from, a, from a, you know, growth slash development standpoint. Because it's uh, studying uh, studying ecolog ecological economics, and others, uh, do we really need uh, economic growth, uh, or do we need economic development? It's a question of quantity versus quality, I guess. Yeah. Do you speak from a Swedish perspective or a global perspective? Uh, so, oh, sorry. Uh, from a, oh, from both actually. But uh, first of all, since it was a critical uh, critical uh, goal. Uh, assessed as a critical goal, it's primarily Swedish context. Okay. Any other who wants to add in uh, on this? Awfully quiet. <laughs> okay. So how, how did you approach this? I mean, did, did this become a discussion when you were trying to assess it? Has it been a discussion also at the global level when you've been to your retreats? This is a very sensitive issue about yes. growth, development, whatever it means. Uh, yes, um, I think first of all we've focused more on the sort of second half of this uh, target um, and the issue of decoupling. Uh, it, oh, sorry. Um, I heard just yesterday one of the priorities in general for the agenda from a Swedish perspective will be on decent jobs, so that's also in, uh, in there. Um, this is not one of the <laughs> targets that I have focused more on. Uh, I don't know, do you have...? Uh, no, but I, uh, I mean growth, I think opportunities to grow has been a clearly a very important issue for developing countries in this whole process and yeah. some wordings have been taken out like any things sort of implying limits to growth uh, is, is very sensitive. But then on, uh, I mean, I think your uh, question in a way raises a bigger question, and that is the extent to which these goals, uh, sorry, targets, angles, are kind of ideological, or if they are kind of more what we call policy targets, you know, is that, yes, there is consensus, we want to have good uh, education opportunities for children. It's, it's not a you know critical issue, but this sort of how should 
societies grow is, is more critical. And what we try, I think, to say in this report is that we think maybe domestic policymakers, when they sort of get the, the minutes from New York on Monday next week and start looking closely at the targets, they might react that these are quite political targets. They are not sort of just nice kind of uh, uncontroversial targets, but they do raise questions. And that's why also we feel that they need to be uh, subject to proper political debate at the national level and not just uh, not, ju not just within government, but really they should be debated in Parliament. Yes. Um. Excellent. Uh, in, if I can add also, compared to Agenda 21, uh, which I think was an extraordinary document in itself, um, and the Rio principles, which, which we have tended to forget about, uh, unfortunately, uh, because they are also quite excellent, and many of the Rio principles have actually been uh, integrated into global policy in terms of, for instance, blue trapeze principle or uh, common but differentiated responsibilities or even in the Rio principles we had the whole responsibility about we are not supposed to cause harm in other parts of the world from our consumption. They were all there. These, I mean, these targets are quite specific still. As you say, Osa, I think that when governments beyond those that have been really involved in the SDG setting, when they start to realize what we have signed on to, this can actually create a lot of interesting discussions. I mean, some of the targets that you mentioned here also, Nina, regarding uh, equality, regarding harassment, regarding, you know, uh, work, even workplace, uh, decent jobs and all that, that will become interesting, even uh, in a country like Sweden, I think. Please. Yes, just a small comment. Yes, uh, my name is Susanna Lucas. I'm an intern at SIDA, uh, your Latin division. And uh, just a comment on your comment that, uh, uh, as I see it, that you cannot, um, I mean, in this economic system, you cannot, uh, um, this, um, yes, the English, <laughs> you cannot uh, yeah, discount the importance of growth that's I mean that's kind of the base of the economic system then you can discuss uh, how the economic system should perhaps be changed yes, yes. That's, that's yeah Good, now we have a discussion <laughs> <laughs> but and Anna I have a question for you uh, regarding uh, let's see where it is it's um, yeah this eliminate all forms of violence 5.2 in the gender uh, equality goal. Um, what kind of policies did you, because you had, uh, you saw that the policies were, um, yeah, uh, positive, you know, in the positive direction. Uh, when, yeah, and I wonder what kind of policies did you look at, what did, yeah, to include in that mm -hmm. research. Um, well, what we've done in general. In uh, for the policy screening, all of this is sort of a, a quick screening overview of existing policy efforts, interventions. Um, and I think for this particular target, seeing that it's a positive trend, that there is a, actually a, a new uh, strategy put forward. Um, that, that where, where there has also been like a critical review of the interventions that have been done uh, to date. Um, and it's quite critical to to the the interventions that have been made, and and also clear uh, suggestions of how to how to revise and how to how to shift it. Um, yeah. So it's more this. Problem. It's the over. Yeah, absolutely. We haven't gone into like specific policy mechanisms, for example. So it's an overview. But it's a really interesting point because that's the risk sometimes with these, that we stuck, get stuck with, oh, do we have the policies? Do we have the legal frameworks? So, oh yeah, we do, so that's fine. So, you know, we are really in the right direction. And I mean, if you look at most countries that are violating human rights or most countries that have huge problems with environmental issues, most of them actually have 
most of them, uh, good policies or you know good legal frameworks. It's just that they are not implemented. So it's a, it's an interesting point in general, and I think even from a Swedish perspective, it might be uh, interesting to later on dig deeper into some of these areas and see how policies are or not translated uh, into real changes. Yeah, just to uh, reiterate, one of the big points we're also trying to make in the report is that this should, n uh, we would like to see in the reporting on this agenda, both to national, uh, at the national level, but also when Sweden reports to the UN, we would, I think, like to see a lot of reporting on actions taken, not just these 100 or 300 whatever indicators that are now being uh, discussed. So it's just sort of one big measurement exercise and you don't have a clue if the, the sort of performance on that indicator was uh, caused by actual uh, t taking action or other circumstances uh, like general economic growth or whatever. So we would like to see uh, not just its obsession with numbers and indicators but actual sort of review of policy taken and for example the OSD perform environmental performance reviews uh, on the environmental sort of domain of sustainable development uh, which could be a model so that's I mean this type of reporting is done uh, which actually says more we think about the bigger picture so yes Rob this is our communication director, director Rob what so because he will forget to introduce himself Yes, hi, I'm Rob, everybody. Um, I, I have a question, which is, are there any insights from this recent report um, or from other research that you've done that might be applied to um, a what we might call a developing country or in a developing country context? You want to add while you think? There is another one. My name is Ida. Ragnarsson and I work at LSU, the National Council for Swedish Youth Organizations. And I have, I think my question links into your question in that it would be interesting to see you mentioned that there were three sort of policy or agenda levels. And it would be interesting to hear your thoughts on if there are any linkages between those three levels that would be interesting to develop as well. I mean, if we, if we in Sweden are focusing on, on one thing, there could be or should be uh, interesting connections into how that relates to our international cooperation or development cooperation uh, agenda as well um, or if that's going to be completely different but maybe we can also learn from someone else in our own agenda mm -hmm. if we focus on the same things not the easiest questions but uh, <laughs> who wants to Okay, I'm very tempted to hand over to Nina. <laughs> <laughs> the very uh, good questions, both Rob's and, and yours. Um, and it's quite difficult to keep all these 169 targets sort of at the top of uh, mind. But um, let me say, I, I can't sort of uh, think of targets immediately that sort of would be, you know, where Swedish performance is sort of informative to developing country challenges um, but I mean the whole sort of lecture I think or lesson we drew was that I mean the, uh, yeah 81 targets are still need to be dealt with so it's not sort of um, uh, there's still a lot to do uh, and some of these will be uh, sort of uh, in common with developing countries and I believe for example also something like decoupling and consumption based emissions that's also growing problems in places like China so this is, that's another sort of um, world view that we think and uh, not just we uh, many think we need to keep in mind this sort of more uh, nuanced world we have lots of emerging economies as well and sort of it's not just a north and south as in sub-Saharan Africa. So, um, sorry, I can't give a more precise answer than that, um, but maybe you can. Uh, no, <laughs> uh, but more like an overarching one is the, I guess the, the challenge and like the time that needs to be invested in actually doing this interpretation, uh, that it really isn't just applying this framework that we're now looking at. It's, it, like I said, like from a quick look, they look quite specific and it's just like, okay, now we're, we know what to do. 
um, but they need to. They, it gets very political and and tricky uh, when applying it to a specific context, um, and especially in develop many developing countries where data is much more scarce than. Uh, I mean, we were able to do like a quick review quite easily, accessing uh, data. So that would be a challenge. And then I guess on some issues where Sweden uh, can sort of set an example, for example, on gender equality, for example, there are, I'm sure, lessons uh, to learn. I mean, I, th I think the, I mean these questions are really interesting, and I mean, if I've understood you cor correctly in your question, one one aspect that, for instance, is included in in this in this goal framework, which I think is quite uh, fascinating, is trade altogether, because trade, for instance, has always been very sensitive to talk about outside of WTO or whatever. You know, you you try to exclude it from these kind of discussions, but it's there. So. No, you can't. You can't exclude it. And actually, th that I think is, is fascinating because we we have managed finally to get a, a, a goals framework that doesn't shy away from those issues that are highly political and con contentious, which we've done in the past, uh, which made then the goals irrelevant in a way. So whatever decisions we make there are really critical uh, in terms of you know the linkages to other countries and in particular emerging economies, foreign direct investments. Uh, you know, connecting up to the private sector, uh, global investments, and so on. So, uh, as you are saying, you know, it's really when we start to analyze what these mean in practice. I think that's when we're going to see, you know, what we are saying. We are connected, and whatever we do, however we, we act on a national level, will also have implications outside of the country. So it's not just about demonstrating examples; it's also about making it more explicit that you know we are part of a global community and we are affecting a global community much more than just through ODA and so on, which has been the classical thing in, in, in development discussions uh, previously, which is just this much of the total. So, any, yes, in the back and then here. So we take two more. Hello, uh, my name is Anders Eslin. Uh, I work as a consultant. Um, I work a lot with landscape projects like biosphere reserves and model forests and, and things like that. Uh, and working with those projects or initiatives, I find that, that a lot of people do have problems interpreting what sustainable development is to start with. And that's kind of the main question. What is sustainable development for us? Uh, do you think that those goals could help them, guide them in their discussions? And the other way around, do you think those kind of landscape laboratories can add value to the public debate or, or the, the development of the concept in a Swedish concept and, and further out in an international concept? Thank you. It's a small question, that one. <laughs> Hi, I'm Claudia Strambo from uh, here from Stockholm Environment Institute. So I'm just picking up on the, the comment on trade um, and the fact that uh, it's quite interesting to see such a critical and difficult issue coming up in a new policy sphere. But at the same time, maybe it's because we're stuck in the normal, uh, uh, the, the normal policy sphere that we start talking about it in another sphere. So I was wondering, since you've been a bit uh, involved also in, in the discussions and uh, with negotiators, to what extent issues like trade or environment that have quite specific uh, institutional uh, institutions and regimes where they're discussed and uh, negotiated on a continuous basis, um, to what extent like there is this feeling that ah, we can't deal with it anymore, so let's try in another way. I'm so happy sometimes to leave this microphone away. <laughs> Here you go. Please. Thanks. So uh, first a question on biospheres and landscape laboratories. And, and you uh, said it's um, like how to interpret sustainability. What does it mean? And I think when I um, started following this process, which was a bit later than uh, Nina, 
I also was sort of was looking as a uh, scientists. Okay, what's their definition of sustainability? What kind of principles or theories or frameworks are they going to apply? And this surely must build on some kind of uh, clear definition. But uh, I couldn't really <laughs> see that there was that. So in a way, I think if you want to be very sort of strict. To me, sustainable development in this UN context and the global goals, it, it relates more to the fact that we need to integrate environmental, economic and social dimensions. It's not so much about what's the sustainable level of resource use, for example, or kind of maximum sustainable yield regarding fishery, that sort of sense of uh, sustainability or natural capital. Um, and I think you just yeah need to accept that's the case. So you will find lots of, I mean, the word sustainability is uh, present in a lot of the targets, uh, but it's very open to interpretation. Um, but I think um, yeah, I mean, it would be re really interesting to hear what it, like if you take this framework to, to the people you work with, like it, what they would you know if it would help uh, them or sort of stimulate discussion. Um, and I think now is the time, I mean, if these uh, laboratories, which sound interesting, but um, if they could uh, have a sort of, uh, you know, you could do a sort of an exercise discussing what do these goals mean in our context, that would be really interesting to show as a kind of early uh, start with this agenda and provide an example how, how it could be worked with. But uh, yeah, I um, can't give any more concrete um, suggestions, I'm afraid now, but, uh, you know, have, a, a, have an experiment, I would say. Mm. Uh, I don't think I have um, much to add. I agree with what you've said. And also on your question, Claudia, to, it hasn't been a, of any of the the limited, uh, to the limited extent that we've been involved in negotiations. And we haven't been in, in the formal negotiations, but just in the preparatory work of the open working group. And also in, in that setting, sort of outside of New York and outside of their political context. So more in like, in, it was more about making sense of like guiding principles, for example, of the framework. What does universality mean? What does integration mean? And so on. Um, so I, I don't have any insights actually on the negotiations in terms of the trade issues. Thank you. But, but it's interesting, Claudia, to come back to your question on trade again. Uh, if you read the article, I shouldn't advertise it too much, but still, I mean, it's interesting. If you read the article by Lomberg, uh, then a few days ago, critical again to the SDGs, and um, he, he, for instance, says that, well, you know, 169 goals, but if you really look at it, it's only about three or four that would solve everything. And one is free trade. Um, so, and then you start to think, well, you know, but for free trade, does free trade work if you have failing states and, uh, you know, so again, it's, you know, just taking an econo very strict economic view, making an analysis, invest in this, and you get $30 back, but you don't look at all the externalities, for instance. So it's, so is this a Danish Lomborg? Yeah, this is Danish Lomborg, who is, uh, so, who is writing in Svenska Dagbladet uh, on a regular basis uh, as a guest uh, uh, edit. Oh, yeah, leader writer comment. So, so uh, you know, I, I think we have a lot to do um, in terms of explaining that many of the sort of simple solutions that that seems to come back in terms of how to save the world or develop uh, countries, um, with, for instance, trade, that they actually do require quite a lot of other things to function and to also be sustainable in the long run. Uh, but I don't think it's hopeless, and I think this framework helps us to set that. That's why it's so important that trade, for instance, is included in the framework and is seen as a critical factor. Uh, that economic growth is part of the framework, so it can be d discussed within this context, etc., etc., etc. So, I mean, let's, this is a starting point. There's no question about it, I think. Um, what I really, I mean, your question about, um, or your, your, your comments and questions, I think, just like you are saying, we are just starting. I mean, what, what needs, exactly what happened with Agenda 21, there is no clear political process. Okay, say, thank you, okay, now it's going to do this. We need, you know, hundreds and thousands of different initiatives and ideas and tests and, you know, how do we really translate this into action? Uh, 
So I urge in particular all, we had a lot of interns here today from the ministries, you should take this forward. I mean, you are the, those below 30 now. I mean, you, you should drive this agenda. You should push, you should take initiatives across your, the ministries and say that, okay, this is going to be our, our agenda. Let's take the leading role here now to push this, uh, this agenda. It's not just for, you know, the old guard up there. It's actually our agenda. So, you know, it's about being innovative and really dare to take this forward. Uh, that I think is, is key here. So, any final words from my colleagues about this? Do you think the SDGs will change, or the agenda, 2030 agenda will change the world? Depending on what the countries do with it. Scientists, <laughs> yes or no? <laughs> what do you think, Kosa? Um, I'm not convinced they will all be achieved by 2030, but I do think they will hopefully, I hope they will function as this sort of glue in international mm -hmm. society. So when there is like division in other arenas, climate negotiations or trade negotiations, countries or civil society can sort of um, you know, bring the SDG reports and sort of remind people that actually there, you have committed to this as well. It's voluntary, but still there, there is a sort of reference mm. point. So, um, that's my hope. Great. Do we want to, I mean, uh, say anything about future work on SDGs and sort of also say that we... Say words about that. As a yeah, I think... <laughs> No, I, I just want to make the point that this was uh, intended, this report, uh, as a sort of stimulating discussion. So if you and your various institutions have, you know, views and ideas, we're very interested in engaging uh, in dialogue with you. Um, so uh, we didn't have time this time to do this super comprehensive, rigorous statistical analysis, um, but we still think this is it can provide this uh, basis for discussion. So we invite you, but maybe yeah. you want to. Uh, I can just comment that we will hopefully s in the coming years, I guess, uh, both be working with the uh, still through the independent research forum. So we're, we're sort of, which allows us to make a good comparison between countries and uh, it's research institute based in, in very different countries allowing us for drawing lessons in implementation across those. Um, and we're hoping to be involved in the continuous implementation in, in Sweden as well. So we're just setting up uh, a project around that. Excellent. So, thanks a lot. Did you have a final comment, Ilva, or was it no? You just uh, wave uh, in happiness. Mm -hmm. That's okay, that's fine. So anyway, uh, so I, we hope that you actually feel not leaving this, you know, that when you're leaving now that you don't feel depressed and everything going the wrong way or whatever. Quite the contrary. Today is actually a, a happy day, we hope. They haven't passed, they haven't uh, yet, I think. So let's uh, be a little you know, optimistic with care, with, with some care still, uh, but otherwise, uh, you know, see this as a really positive and interesting agenda to move forward and something that actually will keep us really engaged over the next 10, 15 years. So you have a fantastic work life ahead of you in implementing the SDGs. So thank you very much, Osa and Nina, a warm applause to you for this one and thank you for coming and joining us here today. Don't forget to take stuff in the back there if you're... Oh.